Amateurs practice till they get it right. Professionals practice till they can't get it wrong. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Rich Wheeler and D. Wayne Wiggins coming at you from the Automotive Training Academy again. Our podcast here, Life Outside the Box. Say hi, D. Wayne. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, so Rich, Andrew Luck retired. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Hey, well, first of all, let's not kid ourselves. I'm a Texans fan. So are you. So I'm not totally upset about it. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> upset. Now, very excited for him. I mean, that's a big choice to make, a big decision. Ooh, but yeah, as a yeah. Texans fan, I'm pretty pumped up. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's the deal. He gave up like $250 million to retire. Mm. That's a lot of cheese. That is a lot of cheddar. And so did you see all the chatter on social media and the news and everything about how the Colts were doing the right thing by paying him $22.6 million? Or maybe, maybe they didn't pay him. Maybe they just aren't asking for it back because it was a roster bonus and then there was this year's paycheck that apparently they already gave him and so they're not going to ask for it back and that's the right thing to do. Yeah well I think it's because they feel like he's going to come out of retirement at some point in time and so they oh, want to make a good sure point. they, they I keep about that, that avenue open because the reality is I mean he's not feeling it I right now about that. you know yeah. he's fighting through injuries but let's give him a year right yeah. how are we going to feel in a year? I hadn't thought about that, but I could, uh, okay, I could kind of see that. I'm looking at it the whole time thinking to myself, how is that the right thing to do? Listen, we're in the car business. We believe in production-based pay plans. If you don't produce, why are you getting paid? Right. So I'm, I was having a hard time with that, but now I kind of see the method behind the madness maybe. They're kind of, number one, I guess maybe somehow another NFL rules that locks him into coming back to them because they paid the completion of the roster bonus or something. Right, maybe they paid yeah. for the year and it locks in. I mean, I don't know all those details, I but I, I, yeah. see the, I see the team working the angle right there. So if he yeah. does unretire, yeah, then, then they've got they, first have, shot at they have the rights and they have the control of that unretirement. So. That makes total sense. Yeah, okay, yeah. I get that. So, okay, so that got me to thinking, um, you know, coming up on football season, how do we relate, because we do, right? We relate football and the car business all the time. So how do we relate? What are the similarities, I guess I should say, between football and the car business, and maybe even more specifically, football and the business office? Well, I always think about what if your Andrew Luck walked out of your dealership? I mean, every store's got one. Every store's got the yes. Andrew Luck in the dealership. Yes. You know, the top dog, the person produces the most. Yes that's constantly on the top of the food chain every single month. Yeah, so like you're a business manager and you got like this rock star salesperson yep. and they leave. That's and right. it's like, oh, now what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's the, you know, they got their paperwork right. Yeah. So you better have more than one Andrew Luck on your sales staff. You, better, you better be cultivating several Andrew Lucks that can help steer business towards the business office. That's exactly right. I yeah. mean, the other thing about an Andrew Luck, as good as his natural yeah. talent was, you know, he still had people that mentored him, that brought him along, oh, yeah. that provide him a, you know, skill set training. You know, F&I people got to get in there Peyton and do the Manning, same thing. you think Peyton Manning mentored him very much? Well, I don't think I'm, Peyton I'm thinking, did. I'm, I think thinking Peyton Peyton, Peyton, I'm thinking Peyton Manning probably didn't really care a whole lot. <laughs> but I, well, I tell you what, though, they did have a history of before he came to the NFL that when it, he was at Stanford, he would attend the Peyton Manning quarterback camps. Oh, that's true. Well, you know, and his, let's not kid ourselves, his dad's Oliver Lux. It's not like he didn't have some mentoring going on already. Yeah, yeah he had a little yeah. football background yeah, to start with background since he was, with. you know, eight years old playing on the AstroTurf. That's exactly so. right. You know, I look at it, so here's, here's one way to look at it, too, is kind of that next man up scenario, right? Um, you know, Andrew Luck, and I don't, even know the, I don't even know who the quarterback is, the backup quarterback for the Colts, which is good. I'm glad I don't know who he is because that means he can't be very good. Um, but, you know, you think about it, if, if, uh, if in the dealership, if Andrew Luck walks out the door, you might be next man up. And it might be time for you to step into that chair. And maybe you're a contractor moving up to a director. Or maybe if you're a GSM, you're asking yourself, who's my next man up? Um, and, you know, next man, uh, next woman in the car business, because that can be male or female in the business office, unlike football. But, yeah, it's uh, who's, who's next man up to take over Andrew Luck's spot. And if that's you, are you ready? Yeah, I mean, are you, are you prepared to seize the moment? Because you're exactly right. That quarterback that just got the starting job by yeah. default. Now, he's been there a couple years, 
and they uh, they? traded him. Oh, yeah, they traded okay. him from New England a couple years ago to come in and fill that role. But the reality is, he's got to yeah. be prepared. This is the shot. This yeah. is the opportunity. So it's all fun and games, right? Until you get smacked from the blind side that first time, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's an awakening yeah. that happens. Yeah. Then there's an awakening that happens. A lot like the business office, right? It looks easy in there, right? Until that first deal that you walk in there. And you get smacked around by that customer just a little bit. Well, until you're trying to juggle the customer, the paperwork, the uh, the heat cases, or whatever the case of, when it's all going on at the same time, I mean that's a lot of action when you first get in there. So we're we're relating we're relating uh, business managers to the quarterback. What, yeah. What other positions uh, on a football team would you relate a business manager to? Hmm. Um, well, could be the offensive coordinator. Ooh. You know, because a couple things, not only is it the, the quarterback, so they take the lead, but the, really the way deals are worked now, a lot of F&I professionals out there are involved really early on in the deal. You know, it's about getting deal structure up front. It's about making sure that, you know, you have okay. the right car to fit the right So that uh, business manager is kind of steering the play, so to speak. Yeah, They're the yeah. one sort of choreographing what's going on. Okay. Kind of, kind of See, I was kind of thinking defensive back because my mind goes to when you're in the box with that customer – and you just have that customer that just beats you up one side and down the other. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a D back, and you just got burned deep for a touchdown, right? Because you got another customer out there waiting for you, and you better be able to move on to the next play and jump the route and get an interception uh, and not let that last play affect you. Short memory, you, you got to have. You got to have a short memory in the business office. There's no question about you know, it. I see that sometimes, though. Sometimes when it's hard to let go of the last deal. And we'll let that last deal affect two more deals, mm-hmm. right? I'm still thinking about the person that was really difficult, mm-hmm. the no-win scenario, the Kobayashi Maru yep. from Ooh, you know Star three Trek. times ago, nice. that's right? So from three times ago, but I'll let he it affect cheated. my next okay. two deals, right? My next two deals. So, so uh, shameless plug, I did do a tip on that called uh, uh, personal reset button because I firmly believe you got to have a personal reset button. Yeah. You've got to be able to uh, somehow or another in between deals, especially when you have that tough deal, you got to hit your personal reset button and go into that next deal uh, with a clean slate because it will it you'll have one deal and it will not just affect that one particular scenario, then it wrecks the next three deals if you let it. So so um, okay, so football, car business, the other thing I always think about is, you know, the similarities between between football and the car business is teamwork. Yes. You know, you got to have teamwork. So you got to have uh, everybody has got to do their job in order for that play to work the way it's supposed to. And then individually, you've got to excel at your one individual job. So the team has to work together as a whole, much the same way salespeople, sales managers, F&I managers, everybody has to work together as a team, but you all individually have to excel at your job uh, to score a touchdown. Yeah, well, you know, with Ooh, the different kind of TD, not the kind of TD no, that yeah, we're no, looking for. No, no, pass <laughs> yeah, on that TD. Pass on that TD. No. <laughs> but, uh, well, you think about it, when we talked about the quarterback or the offensive coordinator as the F&I professional, the other thing is what they do is they survey the defense and they make the audibles, right? So they, mm-hmm. they understand what play it takes to get to the right position. So I position my wide receiver out, but I audible in because I see where the D-back's playing. Mm-hmm. See, I think that that goes along with exactly what they do in the F&I office all the time, right? I get the deal. I look at deal structure. So maybe the, maybe the deal was desked at a certain percentage on a certain car and going to a certain bank. And they got an approval because they were hunting the, uh, you know, the red X. I mean, the the green check. Yeah, they're hunting the green check. I'm sorry. I forgot yes. to say that, but, yeah, yeah. but they get that approval back. But sometimes they go with the quickest approval and not the best approval. And not the best approval. So I think that's where the F&I manager has to come in, make a decision, look at it, call an audible, and then decide where to put that deal at next. Because like it's a you know, it's a better situation for the team. You know, the other thing that, that every time I think about football and the business office, I start thinking about like running plays and being diligent in running your play is sort of like your process. And in the business office, it's so important to stick to your process, not only from the opportunity to pick up gross profit, but nowadays, man, we got so much stuff coming at us that if you don't have a process and you don't have a 
a repeatable, do it this way every single time, you're going to miss something from a compliance standpoint. You're going to miss an OFAC. You're going to miss a red flags. You're going to miss a risk-based pricing or something. You're going to miss something somewhere along the line if you're not diligent in your process. So, you know, that's the other way. I know it sounds crazy that you're relating football to compliance, but eh, you, know, you kind of have to have that process that keeps you in line and keeps you compliant. Hey, speaking of compliance, did you see uh, in the in this last month, in the last couple of weeks, there were two articles written about guys that were being indicted for bank fraud. Okay, so ooh, one ooh, so in um in a, was it was that F and I showroom? Yeah, yeah, F and I showroom magazine. I, I did. I I don't. I skimmed them. Yeah. Okay, so one of them is is that it was the owner of the store, the dealer, who also used to be a head of an organization for used cars. I won't mm-hmm. name it, but right. But then his F and I producer were both. Uh, indicted by a federal grand jury, and what they were indicted for was bank fraud. Now, the owner faces up to 550 years in jail. Cool. And the F&I producer faces up to 330 years in jail, not to mention the millions of dollars of fines that they that they that they are you know held accountable for. Well, I, you know what? At that point, just send me a bill. I'm going to be in prison for 330 years. I mean, what are you going to do? You going to put a collection item on my bureau? Yeah. I mean, what's the issue? Yeah. Yeah. What's the, 330 years? Good but, night all right, so, over a car deal. So what no, do you, thank you. What do you I'm think out. they did so drastically bad that got them those years? It had, I mean, embezzlement, I, I would assume. You're bound to be embezzling out of the dealership somehow? No, it was bank fraud. And, and what it was, it cites in this case, and there's another case too where a, um ex-owner of a dealership is suing the formal uh, F and I manager and the general manager for bank fraud. The and dealer suing the the general manager and the F and I manager. Yeah, now it's civil; it's not criminal at this point, but it's because the bank fraud they committed shut the dealership down, put them out of business. Put them out of business. So in both instances, though, what it wow. was all about falsifying or inflating income on credit apps when they sent it over to. Oh come on! Yeah. Now, people, people are seriously still changing income on credit applications. Yeah. Hey, don't you know it's the 1980s <laughs> all over again? The 1980s called. They want their car business back. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. But that's just, I mean, that was, there's a couple of other things they were doing, like, ah. um, you know, punching cars and not letting the manufacturers know. So they scoop the money and, you know, showing phantom down payments. And there's some other things, if you go back and read the articles, it tells. But I was thinking to myself, you know, how come people in today's age still feel like that you can increase income or falsify something on the credit app? I mean, we live in the information era, by God. Number one, you can't. And here's the second thing is, how many times have you heard the story where the customer was the one that threw up the red? The customers don't want you falsifying their information. No. Oh. Because they realize, hey, if you're willing to falsify that information, what else are you falsifying? Maybe even to me. So. You're not doing them any favors because you get them approved on a car. I can promise you. They don't want you falsifying their information. Yeah. You know, I think some of it goes back to how much compliance education is done in the store. Yes. Is it formal education or is it that trickle-down education? You know, my manager taught me the way his manager taught him, the way his manager taught him. And really, compliance hasn't been a a big focus. I'll give you that. You know, the other thing I think, too, as an industry, we're pretty ripe for the opportunity to have a compliance issue just because of the nature of our business. Yes. You know, turnover in stores now, you got to think about it, was it 72% was one of the latest numbers yeah. I saw? So 72% I don't know of the people... That that's, I don't know that that's upper management. No. You know, I think that's probably the lower level employees, you know, line employees, if you want to call them that. But yeah, I, but you're right. I think that, that figures into uh, poor compliance because you got so many people cycling through and they just don't know. Well, sure, but think about those lower level employees that we're talking about, those salespeople. How many times do we see really good salespeople being fast tracked in the business today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're a really good salesperson, they got the personality, they got that it factor, and then they're moved quickly up into sales management. And once they make that role, now sales managers now are taking on some of the F&I duties because we have that blended approach. Yeah, that's true. Right? So now they start taking on some of that compliance responsibility. But the fact is, because I was newer to the business, I'm fast-tracked to management. Maybe I haven't had that education that I need. Well, I think we trickle-down education does not work in a car dealership. You have to train your people. You have to train your people. Oh, absolutely. And if nothing else, just to protect yourself as a dealership, 
um, but really to protect them too because what you don't want to do is you want somebody to get in trouble for doing something that they didn't even know they weren't supposed to be doing. Now, falsifying income, I can't help you on that one. No, if you no. knew you weren't supposed to be falsifying income, whether you got compliance training or not, but there's a ton of other things that people can get themselves in trouble for that really wouldn't be their fault. So, um, yeah, you know, hey, uh, right back to football again, right? We're right back to football teams don't just play on Friday nights or college teams on Saturday or the pro teams on Sunday. Um, they practice all week long. They go to mini camp uh, before the season ever starts. You know, they have playbooks that look like an encyclopedia. So it doesn't happen by accident. We can't take that approach in the car dealership either. So, okay. So back to football. Who's your pick? Who's your pick this year? Oh. Who's going all the way to the Super Bowl? Oh, okay. So you know I'm a Texans fan. Right. So Are we going? Well, I'm going to have to say yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be a good fan if I didn't say yes. I'd now, sure feel better if we had a left tackle. Well, that or if we had a running back. Or a running back. Now, yeah, now that Lamar Miller blew his knee out. Well, we got Duke. So we'll yes. see how Duke yeah. has to go, yeah. but he hadn't practiced yeah. yet, so I'm a little concerned there. But I like our chances just as well as anybody's. Okay, Although so if we're I'd... not picking the hometown team. Okay, so, okay, so eliminate yeah. the Texans. Yeah. All right, well, if you go AFC, mm-hmm. okay. right? I think you got to look at the Chiefs. Okay. And you got to, of course, look at the Patriots. Yep. I mean, until somebody proves that they are Pat not Mahomes, done. Got, I'm Patriots. Yeah. Tom Brady. Yep. The GOAT. Yep. Okay. So we're going to go either Chiefs or Patriots from the AFC. I do like them. Who's our NFC team? Uh, you know, I think the NFC is a little wide open. I'm starting to really like uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. This, this could end up being their year. I don't know why that I feel that way because I've, I've given Matt Ryan every year the opportunity that, you know, and I just can't quit giving it to him. But I think he's, I think he's that quarterback that you can just almost every year go into it with a team around and thinking, yeah, they could make it this year. What? I mean, obviously you got Seattle, you got the Rams, you've got, you know, you got a bunch of good teams in the NFC too. It is kind of wide open over there. Yeah, but I just, it, well, even the Rams, I mean, it depends if Gurley comes back healthy. Yes, that is a good point because he is, he shoulders the load for that team. Yeah, they definitely pretended that he wasn't hurt or during the playoffs, right? but it came out in the off season. Yeah. Yep, we had a knee problem yeah. or whatever Oops. the issue was. Uh-oh. Well, and let's not face, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. He's got a little bit of a history. Yeah. That dude was a beast in college. He, he was, was a man amongst boys. And if he hadn't got his knee blown out there at the end of that, his senior season was it his senior or junior season? Think, right before the right draft. Before he came out. Yeah, right before. This, like I think it was, I think it might have been like the last game of the season or something. He got he's got his knee blown out. Um, yeah, he would have been. I mean, he would have been even better than he is now, and he's pretty darn good now. So, what do you okay. think about practice? What do I think about practice? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that. Yeah. So, NFL practice now I think is dumbed down to the level that uh, it's providing not as good a product on the field. Yeah. Um, you yes. So I think and relate it back to the car business, right? It's we have to be willing to practice perfect. We have to be willing to uh, I'm such a dad. I teach my 7-year-old this all the time when we're playing. We're out in the backyard and we're just playing catch, right? He's he's, he's a big baseball player. And uh, and I always tell him I'm like, "Hey, you got to practice perfect so that when you're in the game, you play perfect." And so he doesn't understand. He's seven. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, I'm a firm believer in that. That's a Lombardiism, by the way. I think Vince Lombardi once says, perfect practice makes perfect. Oh, well, there you go. I also heard another good quote uh, yes. when we talk about practice. It's a GMC commercial, actually. And they didn't they did give any credit about who came up with it. It was just on the GMC commercial. Mm-hmm. But I really thought it was very cool. And I thought it related both to football, which that's what it was, the commercial was about. Sure. But it also related to the car business. And what the quote said, it says, amateurs practice till they get it right. Professionals practice till they can't get it wrong. Ooh, I like that. And I thought that was very good, and I thought it was very fitting for what we do. Yeah, that may go on a sign in my office or something. Yeah, so for those of you driving in right now, you're listening to us, do some practice in your store. Practice perfect. And don't practice during the live contact. That's really costly. Yeah, you'll blow out a knee. (laughs) All right, folks. Well, listen, from, uh, from everybody here at the Automotive Training Academy, uh, from Rich, from D. Wayne, uh, you heard it first here. D. Wayne's picking the Patriots to whoa, go back whoa, to the hey, Super uh, Bowl. Time out, no. <laughs> Texans, 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 go Texans. To, Texans to the Super Bowl. And uh, practice perfect. 
teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. Be experts in your process so you don't get yourself into a, uh, a 330 year prison, <laughs> prison yeah, sentence. That'd be a problem. <laughs> that'd be a problem. And, uh, and enjoy your football season. Hopefully, uh, hopefully your team does everything you want it to do except beat the Texans. All right. <laughs> we All out. Right. Hey, we're out of here.